confession this morning. Our confession comes from, uh, from Deuteronomy chapter 5, in which we read these words. Moses summoned all Israel and said, Hear, O Israel, the decrees and laws I declare in your hearing today. Learn them and be sure to follow them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. It was not with our fathers that the Lord made this covenant, but with us, with all of us who are alive here today. The Lord spoke to you face to face out of the fire on the mountain. At that time I stood between you and the Lord to declare to you the word of the Lord because you were afraid of the fire and did not go up the mountain and he said I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt out of the land of slavery you shall have no other gods before me you shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below you shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals, nor the alien within your gates, nor uh, so that your manservant and maidservant may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not set your desire on your neighbor's house or land, his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. These are the commands the Lord proclaimed in a loud voice to your whole assembly there on the mountain from out of the fire, the cloud and the deep darkness. And he added nothing more. Then he added those, then he wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me, says Moses, the word of the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today we are talking about God's infinite nature, and we'll get there in more detail in a few moments. But imagine for a moment, or try to, that God was not entirely holy and perfect. That somehow he was mostly holy and perfect, but not totally holy and perfect. It, it, it's nonsensical. It doesn't compute if you were a computer. It wouldn't make sense. God is holy and totally perfect and holy. But for us, these commandments, they only touch the surface if we allow them, right? I can say pretty safely that I have not actually committed any physical acts of murder. And I'm pretty sure that you can say the same thing. However, 
these commands reach much deeper. God doesn't just want us to avoid actually physically murdering people. God wants us, God created us to be free from murderousness. <coughs> Excuse me. God wants us to be free from adulterousness. Just as God is holy and perfect, he says that he wants us to be holy as well. Let us take a moment to confess to God, for the reality of our lives <coughs> is very different from these commands in our daily lives and in our hearts. Let us pray. <coughs> Father in heaven, we confess, O oh God, that we have not kept these commandments Certainly, O oh Lord, some of these commandments we have not physically, actually, in person, really broken. However, we know that in our hearts and in our minds, we have broken them all. And in actual, factual reality, we have actually done also many of these things. And we know, O oh God, that it is, regardless, it is not your desire that we would simply have outward obedience. But rather, it is your desire that we would be holy just as you are holy. And so, Lord, we take a moment of silent prayer to lay before you our sins. Forgive us, please, O oh God. Forgive us for our sin. <clears throat> and Lord, teach us to walk in your way everlasting. That we may become increasingly day by day a people who live truly and fully in the reality of what your Son has done for us where your Son has washed us clean in your sight. May your Spirit continue to work into us to make that also a daily reality of our walk, of our life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our assurance comes from Psalm 66, verse 20, in which we read, Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Our God has not rejected our prayers, and he has not withheld his love from us. He loves us the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us listen as we praise together in our hearts the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world.